The Quotient Rule. Objectives. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to recognize when you should use the quotient rule, and apply the quotient rule to find a derivative and simplify your result. All right, here is the quotient rule. If f and g are differentiable functions, then f divided by g is differentiable for all x as long as g of x does not equal zero, and the derivative is given by, so if I have f divided by g prime of x, that equals g of x times f prime of x minus f of x times g prime of x all over g of x squared. So you might be thinking, what? That's a crazy looking formula. And yes, yes it is. So I'm going to share with you the little way that my high school teacher had me memorize this formula. So instead of thinking about it as f and g, he told me to think about it as the high function and the low function. So the high one being on top and the low one being on the bottom. And I want to find the derivative of high over low. So the little way to help remember the mnemonic is low d high minus high d low over low squared. So low d high minus high d low over low squared. Low d high minus high d low over low squared. Say it five times before you go to bed and you'll have it memorized. So that's how we're going to find the derivative of a quotient of two different functions. So as nice as it would be, it doesn't work out to just take the derivative of the top and then take the derivative of the bottom separately. So that's the warning on the bottom that if you have f over g prime, unfortunately that is not f prime over g prime. Can't just do the top over the bottom. So I have to use this formula, low d high minus high d low over low squared. Or formally using g's and f's and f primes and g primes, this formula up here. So we're going to get some practice on how to use this formula, but really more importantly, when it is necessary to go through all this trouble and use this formula. All right, so some examples. If necessary, find the derivative of each of the following using the quotient rule. So I went ahead and started with one of the most common mistakes students make. And I don't want them to say mistakes as in they get the wrong answer, but as in they waste time by using the quotient rule when it is unnecessary to do so. So 1 over x squared. They see it as a fraction or a quotient, so they think I must use the quotient rule. However, 1 over x squared can be rewritten as x to the negative 2. So if I were trying to find the derivative of x to the negative 2, I only have to use the power rule. I can bring the power to the front. So negative 2, x, and then reduce the power by 1 to the negative 3. So negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. And that's it. I'm done. Negative 2x to the minus 3 is the answer. Now, I can simplify it because I wouldn't want any negative exponents. So the x to the negative 3 would move to the denominator and be positive x cubed. But that is much shorter than actually going through the process of using the quotient rule and then simplifying. So if I have 1 over x squared or even a number over x squared or x to any particular power, I want to rewrite that as that variable to the negative exponent. So I want to move it to the numerator and make the exponent the opposite sign that I see. So now let's take a look at another example. All right, so on this particular problem, I would want to use the quotient rule. So let's say I'm being asked to take the derivative, d dx, with respect to x, of x minus 1 over 2x plus 3. So I have a linear function over a linear function. There's no way that I can simplify this, so I'm going to have to use the quotient rule. So the quotient rule says low d high, low 2x plus 3 d high, the derivative of the high one, the top one. So the derivative of x minus 1 is 1. So 2x plus 3 times 1, low d high, minus high, x minus 1, d low. So the derivative of the low one, the bottom one, is just 2. And then all over low, the bottom function, squared. So I definitely don't want to leave my answer like this. I want to simplify the numerator. So what I, one quick thing, 
Just as a note, this 2x plus 3 does not, I repeat, does not cancel with the 2x plus 3 or two copies of 2x plus 3 in the denominator. So because of this operation, this minus sign, these two don't cancel. So imagine, I mean, it, it kind of looks like it does the way that it's written, but imagine if I had x plus y over x. These two x's do not cancel. The only time I can cancel things is if everything is being multiplied and divided. So if I had x times y over x, then yes, the x's cancel. But here, that's not what I have. I have, you know, two things on the top being subtracted. So these 2x plus 3's do not cancel. So please don't fall into that trick. I'm warning you now. So in the numerator, all I can do is distribute and combine like terms. So I have 2x plus 3. And then here, I have minus the 2 times the x. So minus 2x. And then 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Times the negative is going to give me plus 2 all over the quantity 2x plus 3 squared and now let's see what happens this 2x in the numerator and this minus 2x cancel so I only have 3 plus 2 so I have 5 over the quantity 2x plus 3 squared and that is how I'm gonna leave my answer 5 over the quantity 2x plus 3 squared alright let's go ahead and take a look at another example so here I do see a quotient, but I can actually simplify this and not have to use the quotient rule. And the reason for that is because of the following property. If I have a plus b over c, if I have two things in the numerator being added or subtracted for that matter, I can split it up to be a over c plus b over c. So on the top, I have more than one thing being added or subtracted and exactly one thing on the bottom, one term on the bottom. So if I were asked to find the derivative of this function, what I'm going to do is split it up into x squared over x plus x over x plus 1 over x. Now, here's the thing. I still have to reduce this and I still have to take the derivative of it. So I'm still, I haven't taken a derivative yet, so I have to keep bringing down my ddx. So x squared divided by x. So this is going to reduce down to just an x, right? Because the numerator here is like two copies of x, so the two co one of the copies of x will cancel. Plus x over x is 1. Plus, so how am I going to handle this, 1 over x? Well, if you remember, I should not apply the quotient rule. I should instead, this is 1 over x to the 1, rewrite this as x to the negative 1. So now I can apply the power rule to each part of this function. So the derivative of x is 1, the derivative of 1 is 0, and the derivative of x to the negative 1 is negative x to the negative 2. So this is my final answer. I can leave it like this, or we can go over a few ways of how I could rewrite this. This could be 1 minus 1 over x squared. So I'm bringing the x to the negative 2. If I move it to the bottom, it becomes positive. And if I want to turn it back into one fraction, now I need common denominators. So 1 is x squared over x squared minus 1 over x squared. So my common denominators now say I can just subtract the numerators, x squared minus 1, over the common denominator. So this would actually be the most simplified answer, although in most cases it's probably fine to stop up here. It's important to understand the rules of combining fractions. All right, let's take a look at another one. So here I have 4x minus 2 over x squared plus 1. There's more than one thing on the bottom. There's two terms to this expression, so I cannot simplify it. I'm going to have to use the quotient rule to solve this one. So the derivative using the quotient rule is going to be low d high, so low x squared plus 1, d high, so the derivative of 4x minus 2 is 4, minus the high function, 4x minus 2, d low, the derivative of the lower function is 2x, all over the low function squared. 
and now we simplify. So let's distribute the 4 on the numerator. So we get 4x squared plus 4 minus, and what's going to happen here is the 2x is going to distribute. So I'm going to get 8x squared, and then the 2x and the minus 2 will be minus 4x times a negative, so plus 4x. Again, all over x squared plus 1 squared. And now combining like terms, we're going to get negative 4x squared plus 4x plus 4 all over x squared plus 1 squared. So if we really wanted to, we could pull a 4 out of everything in the numerator, um, but this is just fine. So we can just go ahead and leave our answer like this. And let's go ahead and try another one that adds an extra little piece this time. So now I want to take the derivative of x minus 1 over x times e to the x. So this one should strike you as different because in the denominator I have a product of functions. And here's what the tempting thing for students to do is, is to recognize this as a product, which is great, but to automatically want to start using the product rule. We can't do that. So if we were to just go ahead and take the derivative of the denominator right now as it is and use the product rule, we would be making an assumption that we could just take the derivative of the numerator and the denominator separately and individually. And we can't do that. So what we have to do is we have to apply the quotient rule. And within the quotient rule, apply the product rule. So let's go ahead and try that. The quotient rule says low d high, so the low function is x e to the x times the derivative of the numerator. That one's nice, that's 1. So low d high minus the high function x minus 1 d low. So here's where it gets tricky. I'm taking the derivative now of the bottom function. But the bottom function is a product of two functions. So now I have to apply the product rule. So I'm going to give myself a set of brackets to work in. So I'm about to take the derivative of x e to the x. The product rule says the first function, x, times the derivative of the second function, e to the x, plus the second function, e to the x, times the derivative of the first function, which would be 1. And now I have to remember to go back to the fact that I was doing the quotient rule. So this is all over low squared, x e to the x squared. So we're starting to get into some pretty complicated derivatives here that require a lot of algebra. So let's go ahead and work through this algebra. I have x e to the x. And what's going to have to happen here is I'm going to have to distribute the x minus 1 to the x e to the x plus e to the x. So it's going to be, let's go ahead and keep that negative out for a second. I'm multiplying x times x e to the x, so x squared e to the x. And then the two outer functions, so plus x e to the x. So let's go ahead and I'm going to try to accentuate what I'm doing. I'm distributing here and here, and now I'm about to go on the inside, and then the last ones. So now I'm working on negative 1 times x e to the x, so minus x e to the x, and then the last one is minus e to the x. And then this whole thing is over x e to the x squared. All right, so I have x e to the x. Before I distribute the negative, let's go ahead and recognize something that x e to the x and minus x e to the x cancel. So now this negative will distribute. I'll get negative x or minus x squared e to the x. This minus and this one will become plus e to the x. And then I have over still x e to the x squared. I'm running out of space here, but let's keep going. And let's see, can we do anything, combine anything? In the numerator, we can factor out an e to the x. And I'm left with x minus x squared plus 1 over x e to the x squared. So the question is, can I cancel this e to the x and this e to the x? Well, there's actually two copies of e to the x right here. So what? is happening is I have e to the x, x minus x squared plus 1 over 
this is like x e to the x, x e to the x, right? That's what the exponent does here. It's two copies of this. So one of the e to the x's will cancel. And I'm still going to have one left on the bottom and two copies of x left on the bottom. So my final answer is negative x squared plus x plus 1. I've just decided to write the variable with the highest exponent first in descending power order. And then the denominator I have x squared e to the x. Quick reminder, this x squared does not cancel with this x squared, right? I have things being added and subtracted, so I cannot just start canceling things. So this here is going to be my final answer. And then to do just one last example, with the quotient rule, we can also uh, talk about generic functions, just like with the product rule. So if I were taking the derivative of x cubed over f of x, I would have to use the quotient rule. And when I get to the derivative of f of x, I have to remember to just write f prime of x. So it's low d high. So low d high, the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared minus high d low x cubed over the derivative of f of x is f prime of x all over low squared. So f of x as a quantity squared. Now in the numerator I can actually factor out an x squared which is common in both. So if I factor out an x squared I'll be left with 3f of x minus x f prime of x and then all over the quantity f of x squared. And another thing I want to bring up too is that I opt to use brackets just so that I don't have, you know, parenthesis next to parenthesis, but brackets and parentheses can be used interchangeably. I just try to use them um, both so that we can sort of really keep track around what exactly um, is one entire quantity.